Greetings, adventure. Welcome to D20 Academy. I'm your host, Shalo Kanishiro, and today uh, is episode four, The Heroes. Alright guys, so today I'm going to be talking about the player characters and their purpose and their relationship with the DM and uh, that dynamic and how that all works uh, with my guest Gabriel Laidlaw. And I also want to apologize in advance, there is some audio issues um, throughout, sometimes it will kind of cut in and out. It only does it a couple times, um, so sorry for that, but I uh, hope you enjoy the episode. Alright, so the heroes. Uh, so yeah, so like I said, we're just today going to be talking about the player characters, what they do, how they're different from the DM, and I'm joined by a guest, Gabriel Laidlaw. You can introduce Ew. yourself. Uh, Gabriel Laidlaw, hit me up. <laughs> hit me up on the Instagram. Um, but yeah, so today we're just going to be talking about, um, you know, kind of what they do in the game and the point of them and uh, how can they be real, how they can be really fun. Uh, like I've mentioned before, most of my experience with Dungeons and Dragons is as a dungeon master. Um, but Gabe here is definitely the most experienced as a player. He plays in a campaign I run. Most experienced um, any person, ever. most experienced player I've that probably exists on the planet. Um, but yeah, so he he has much more experience as a player than I do, uh, and I think the dungeon master and the player are very different. We have both done the other role a couple times. Uh, he has dimmed a one shot once before. Have you done anything else other than that? I did. I started another like mini oh campaign, but it never, yeah yeah like, yeah, yeah never yeah. did anything. Yeah, that is true. And that had like two sessions maybe. Yeah, and uh, I have been a player a couple times in the aforementioned things you have started. Yes, and a couple our other. And friend. you're going to be in one that I'm going to be running this. Yeah, summer. and so hopefully we'll be going to that also when we start playing that. Maybe talking about what's happening in the sessions and what we're learning and all that juicy stuff. It's you know he. Gains more experience as a DM, and I can know what it's like to be a player. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to the free experience weekend, where I just gain double experience for <laughs> DMing. Because you're DMing, yeah. You yeah. give my player, you give my character <laughs> good stuff, so then in my campaign I give your character good stuff. Um, that what this all thing should be. Yeah, but I guess I should kind of let you talk here, because you have the most experience with this. Uh, what do what do char- like PCs do? Player characters? Player characters, mainly play in the world that the Dungeon Master creates, and play around with each other. That sounds bad. <laughs> Communicate to, to the other players and the other people in the world. You go and you explore the different places in the world that the Dungeon Master has created or that he has found online or through modules, and you explore. You are basically playing in a playground in the mind of the Dungeon Master. Right. Mind you, other players. Yeah, I, yeah. It, it's kind of like, um, yeah. I, yeah, I guess it's like a sandbox, right? Like, yeah. If 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 the world the DM is creating is the sandbox, and you're the one in there playing around with it, but I, I don't want it to sound like you follow the story that like the DM yeah. like, drives you. D and D isn't just about like you're reading a book and like oh my character yeah. does this. Yeah, you don't like. I think cause one of the things that makes it really awesome. Yeah. I think what makes a story really cool and what keeps it fresh for both the DM and the players is that everyone involved playing the game is making choices that change the game. So, you know, as a DM, I'll set up, like, like an adventure, right? And I'll, you know, I'll plan for this adventure, and here's the hook that might get them into the adventure. Here's, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll plan out, like, oh, here's the dungeon they're going to be going into, and here are the monsters and stuff. But I can't totally plan exactly what's going to happen, because you guys, you know, as players, might do something I, I never expected. Of course, and it's part of the beauty of D&D. Yeah, that's, that's that why you write, you create you the story. You are playing yeah. it. That, like, I love playing video games and things like that, but D&D is so open to creativity and ma- you making your own choices, <clears throat> not selecting from a list of dialogue options or, yeah. oh, would I turn right here to go to this quest. Yeah. You get to actually play in this world to your heart's content. Yeah, you make, you make, your, you make choices as well, and it's not just following the story the DM has like, exactly planned out yeah. for you. Um, so that's, that's called a railroad campaign. Which we'll probably use some terms here. Yeah, I so, feel like people misunderstand what D and D is. Like people that I've told, I oh I play D and D. They're like, oh, so what's the story? Like, what, how does that work? Did you win? Yeah, <laughs> did yeah. you win? Yeah, did you yeah, win? Did that's you that's win. a big question. It's you are playing through a story. Sure, the DM might have like things planned out. Like, oh, I kind of want this to happen at this time. 
right? Or like, like or like this is a, a backstory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You build. You, you're building the yeah. story together. You work together as the players and the dungeon master. You work together to make the story into what you want it to be, and to do what you want to do. What your characters want to. Do. Right. So like that freedom is really cool as a player. Um, I, I think the pressure is you know a little more on the dungeon master, and that can be a little daunting to some people because yeah, they're like, you know, I can't just railroad them down this certain path, you know, that they're gonna follow exactly. And they might do whatever they want, and that's a little scary. Like, how do I plan for that, or what do I do when that happens? And that takes a lot of, you know, just experience and just playing the game a lot, just impro- improv and, and that kind of thing. But it's, like, the best parts of the game. Yeah. When you let your players try and do something that might not be what you plan for or what you think is the best option for the puzzle or whatever thing that you've made, let them try it. Yeah, I, and... I think, like, it's really cool for me, too, because I'll create a scenario or I'll create a, a puzzle or, or an encounter, and, you know, I'm the one who created it, so I, you know, I know what's put into it, but then you guys can still surprise me in coming up yeah. with ways of solving it, or, um, you know, maybe I just think, okay, like, either they win here or they lose here, like, either they kill the monster or the monster kills them, but you guys might, you know, do something totally different and, like, talk yeah. with the monster or whatever, and, like, that's really cool for me because... You know, I mean, I think one of the best things about being a player is discovering secrets and, like, all these cool yeah. things in the story and, like, uncovering those. But, like, as a DM, you obviously won't get that as much because you're behind everything, right? You yeah. know everything that's going on in the story and all that kind of thing. But you can be surprised in those instances when the players, you know, think outside the box or when they do something you didn't expect. Choose to create their own path that you didn't even realize was, you know, one of the end destinations. And that really helps with playing your character, when you have that freedom to not just, oh, I win this battle or I lose this battle, but you got to make your own decisions and you got to make your own choices, the DM might have thought that you're going to walk through the doorway, but your character might be more fitting for them to break down the wall right. and walk yeah. through. Yeah, I mean, and also, you know, I think being a player is or a PC is much, much different than being a DM. Yeah. Also, I want to bring up the point about, like, the collaborative aspect because as a DM, you are seeing like you're alone in that role. I'm alone. <laughs> yeah, you're you're no, you're alone in that role, and you're doing, you know, it, I mean, it's it's great. Like the DM, some people try like DMing with like multiple people and stuff, and I don't understand how you can possibly do that. That sounds really challenging. Yeah, we're not the people. That yeah, yeah, about. like <laughs> you, 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 like for me at least, like you need a singular mind who understands, you know, the like, yeah. the way that everything is said. And well, they probably do that because they're like illithids, you know. <laughs> Um, <laughs> they, they're like, it's a colony. <laughs> they have a hive mind. Um, you know, it, it's much easier to have one mind running those things. But a part, like, probably one of the best things, you know, the best thing about D&D is the party, mm-hmm. right? It's, it's a collection of PCs. And as someone who hasn't been a, a PC a lot, what's it like being in a party and, like, playing with other people who are at your level? Just playing a singular character rather than a DM who's running all these kind of things. It's it's different, but I think it's just as fun. If you are someone who loved fantasy growing up and not just wanted to create your own stories, but be the characters in that story, then playing a character in D&D is perfect for that, in my opinion. You get to experience things as a character in a party with other characters who are doing the same thing. You get to Things like, oh, what would my character do do here? And you try and make them as real of a person, or not as real, right, yeah. as you want to. You get to play around. And in a party, it allows for collaboration in basically every aspect. You get to collaborate on plans, thoughts, conversations... Conversations between player characters is really important for building connections and relationships, and that affects real life, too, which is one of the great things about being in a party, is that as you're connecting as characters in the game, you're also connecting as people in life. Right, and I do want to get into this later in the show if I, you know, when it comes up, or when I, you know, have run out of content. Uh, No, but (laughs) I do want to get into... The outside aspects, right, like, of the game, mm-hmm. not just... I don't just want to be talking about, okay, this is how you play the game, and this is what the game is like, blah, 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 blah. So you Here are tips and stuff. Dice. Right, exactly. Yeah, like, this is a D20, and determine the outcome of the... I also want to talk about, you know, go into the, you know, the actual, like, impacts of people yes. playing the game. Because I feel like that's obviously the most, imp- 
important part, you know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. it's it's cool and all being in the game and playing as a fantasy character and all. And all. There's so many cool things about the game. But the reason you keep playing and the reason I think it's so popular and so successful is because of what it does just emotionally and just, like, it's, it's super yeah. healthy. And I do want to get into that. I'm, we might talk a little bit about it here. Um, yeah, but going off of what you were saying, Gabe, about, um, like, how you're playing the characters if you love fantasy and everything. And I think it, it connects back to, like, when you're a kid. That's all you do, mm-hmm. right? Like make you believe. play, yeah. You make believe either as you know you pretend you are these people, or you play with action figures or whatever, right? Pretending that there's these characters, and D and D is basically just that for grown ups. You know what yeah. I mean? Because like you you add a rule system, so there's some challenge there, and there's mm-hmm. there's things you have to overcome, and you add more detail to make it more realistic, and, and then things like that. Yeah. Um, you add more stakes. Yeah, yeah. It's not just. It's more laid out and more yeah. structural, um, because as you mature, like you start to, you know, yeah. have to have those things like, you know, obviously movies f- for the kids demographic are going to be much less lax on stories and characters and stuff. But as you get older, you care more about the thing and you realize like, yeah, that more kind of intense things, and the rule set like, and the structure of the game allows for stories to be told, uh, really well. But that's basically what a, yeah player is, and I I a kid like connected to um theater a lot as well yeah you're playing you're acting as a character right just like theater except you're not re- like reading off a memorized yeah you're not, you're not yeah, reading yeah. off a script so basically imagine you're playing a character but instead of a script it's just what do you want the script to be yeah your it, side of yeah the you i mean you get to decide the, what you say right exactly but yeah so it's similar to theater and you know that kind of that childhood um <laughs> <laughs> uh you know kind of your make the make believe you used to do back then, but just uh, elevated, right? Yeah, and I, I, it's it's really cool because, um, you know, and, and I think this this also takes some practice and, and some learning, um, but you know, as you're playing a character, like that character's growing. Yeah, yeah, you're yeah. growing as a character and like as a person as you're going through whatever traumatic things you might experience, like fighting monsters, isn't isn't something that you do every day as a normal person. So you've got to think about how that affects you as a character, and you got to have fun with, like, how do I re- react to this? How would my character react to the pain of being cut apart, you know? Right, right. Like the pain of the things friend. they go through yeah, while yeah. adventuring. you got to see how this character grows, and you got to have fun and decide how you want them to grow as a person. I mean, it's, you know, if, if you're a writer or, a, you know, you know anything about story or creating characters... You know, you, you have this arc for them, right, and how they're growing over the course of the story and, you know, how they're confronting their fears or they're confronting these things um, in their life. And it's, you know, it's similar to that, and but you don't, like, write it out at the beginning. Like, it's just organic, yeah. and you see where the kind of the story takes you and as you grow as characters. And I think this is a little, like, advanced, I guess, just this whole, like, arc thing and growing as a character. I think it's a little hard. Because it's not planned. Yeah, I don't think you need to, like, keep that in mind, like, oh, I need to plan out the story arc for my character. You should kind of just yeah. think about how my character react to this in this moment. Exactly. Think about it moment to moment. Yeah. And that's how you get through it. I mean, it's the same It's the same with the I and mean, you don't want to have anything set in stone, like, in your mind. Like, it has to happen this way or whatever. Yeah. Because that's, you know, what we were talking about at the beginning, like, the joy of the game is, like, other people will surprise you and stuff like that. So you want to be open to how your character's, you know, changed and stuff. And I do want to also get into later on about, like, creating a party and, like, how the people, the different characters should be connected, like, if they're like each other or if they mm-hmm. dislike each other and stuff. Because I think that's also where you grow, right? Like, if you, if there's another character in the party that agrees with you, right, then you guys, if you have yeah. the same electronic experience in your together. past, exactly, yeah. But then, like, if someone comes into conflict with your beliefs, um, in conflict with your beliefs, then you might also grow there talking to that character and stuff. And not just the other players, I mean, the DM can also approach you by NPCs mm-hmm. and situations. Um, that challenge you and, like, challenge right. how you think. But, like, I think we can both agree, like, in the campaign that we're you're running now. I mean, it's been going on for nearly two and a half years. Yeah. Um, but, like, your character has changed a lot. Definitely. It's really fun to look back and see how Rassikar has changed over the past two and a half years. Which, it's crazy it's that long. Yeah, it's... It's crazy. <laughs> it's when, been... Yeah. When... I first created him. I didn't really know what I was doing. I was like, oh, this kind of yeah, That was cool. still, like, when I was still, like, learning how to play <laughs> the game. Like, it's evolved so much. And I was kind of just this 
you know, kind of easygoing, like, oh, I'm gonna go steal this, you know, whatever. Yeah, you were like, you were like, you were like a charlatan. Yeah, yeah. 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 Because you're a sorcerer, so you were just kind of like, you don't really have any, like, fears, like, you kind of just cared for yourself and all this kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, But that really changed over time as we grew closer together as a party and as the stakes rose in what we were dealing with. As a party, we got closer together just by spending time together and going through things, but really, the escalation in events, like, oh, we went from, you know, fighting whatever it is, this small little enemy, to right. fighting something so much larger, a kraken, and then a dragon, you know? It's destroy the world now, yeah, and, and now like, it's, the, the stakes world are really high. Sake, it right. really forces you, as a character, to, it really forces the character to change, you know? When that is put on their shoulders, they have to take on a lot more responsibility. And so Rassikar has gone from just a charlatan to someone who's charismatic and trying to be a I mean, leader. He, in yeah, some he's, ways. De- he's definitely gotten really like darker, much more like yeah the weight the weight of things and like the pain of the things he experienced. And I like I'm just saying as observing the character um, from playing the game, like he's changed so much. Because um, at first he kind of just didn't care about things, just kind of himself. Mm-hmm. And then that changed when he realized, when he met uh, his sister, and he's like, oh, yeah. I have a sister now, and I need to, like, I need to protect her now, and now, like, there's a connection there. And also later on, um, which is something, a big kind of plot point for Rescar, which is, like, he has a lot of responsibility, yeah. and he can't just be walking around just doing his own thing because people get hurt. And that was kind of a big thing, like... Um, with an NPC that, yeah. I, that I had called... It was a really interesting re- conversation. Yeah. So, it was about... Because, you know, as Raskar, in the beginning, he didn't totally have a cares about people or things. It kind of only for himself and his own survival or maybe just his friends. Yeah. And so, you know, villages and things were, like, impacted and hurt by that because of his uh, naivety, I guess, kind of his arrogance as well. And now he has to deal with that. Yeah, he has to deal with... Oh, that mistake that I made there. Not just, oh, that was a mistake. We move on. It impacted people in the world. Right. And the world has changed. Yes. Because of that, yeah, and stuff. And so that's, that's changed him to be more, you know, aware and stuff. And, and he tries to be now. Yeah, and now it's, you know, he's definitely, he he's definitely grown. Yeah, he's, 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 he's much more serious and, like, aware now and trying to do the right thing. And, um, yeah, and I, and I think that goes for, all, all, like, a lot of the other characters as well. I mean... Yeah. I think a lot of them have have changed a lot through As that. As they should. Yeah, I mean, because, like, yeah, but like, once again, I don't think it's something you focus on. It's kind of just happened organically, I yeah. mean. Yeah. But if it isn't happening, then you've got to, like, think about like, what you're doing. If you feel, if, some, if you're already playing in the game, and you feel like, oh, I've been playing the same character this whole time, you right. know, they haven't changed, they're kind of like the same thing, I'm kind of getting bored of it. Instead of thinking, oh, what can, what else can I play, you know? Think of your character. Think of your character in every moment. Like, okay, how they react to this conversation? How they react to going with this plan? How they react to fighting this monster? And try and make them not just, you know, figment of your imagination. It's kind of like, oh, yeah, yeah that's that thing that I go when I play and I roll dice on every, like, once a week or so. Make them a character that lives and breathes, not just in rolling dice for combat or, oh, I say this line here because this is... Right. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Just try and make them a real person. Once you make them have real person with faults and strengths and... Moral boundaries yeah, and relationships. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Then it becomes so much more interesting to play them. Right. If I you mean, just played yeah. something that was like, I'm a good person. I only do good things, and I hit things with my good sword. Yeah. It's just... um, right, but and I, but I like that's a great pace to start. Like, I do want to touch also later on, like, cliches, because, like, a lot of people, like, are terrified. Like, mm-hmm. I want to be, like, build, like, a unique character or whatever. Like, do not shy away from cliches. It can be a super easy starting point for players. Yeah, you just and have to build. Exactly, yeah. Build and, off. okay, I mean, I think I do want to talk about this as well. If you want great examples on how characters change, watch Critical Role. Yeah. yeah. It's the stories that, like, th- and how the characters have grown. Every single character, there's seven PCs in that campaign. That's crazy. Um, is so... It's like really like it's really impactful and it's it's organic and it's amazing. Yeah. It's like all of them like change and definitely like Scanlan. Definitely right? Scanlan. I mean, I mean he started too, I think. Yeah, I mean he started as a cliche, right? So 
if you don't know anything about the show, um, Scanlon's Sam Regal, which is Sam Regal is basically yeah. the best player I've ever you know, that is on the planet. Um, He's second to me, of course. I'm right, I, I forgot. Um, and he, um, he when he started playing the game, he just asked his, his one of his friends who's also in the game. Like, okay, like, what's the dumbest yeah. thing? And he's like, oh, a halfling bard, right? That's, like, the lamest class. And so he took that, and he's, he ran, at the beginning, he was just a cliche of, like, this womanizer, like, gambler, like, I just yeah, play music. Yeah, you're I just, charismatic. Yeah, I just like, care about myself. I'm oh, super hey there, charming. Right. right. But then as, you know, I don't want to spoil anything from the story if you, if you decide to go and watch it, but, you know, he grows in maturity and self-awareness and, like, selflessness, and it's, yeah. it's amazing. I mean, all the characters really have great arcs in that, but that's not something that they build, like... You know, in interviews or or you know events where they're talking, um, they 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 always say like it just kind of happens like organically and like mm-hmm. I, I like what you said about how they react to things because that yeah it kind of goes back to acting like when you're acting you're not just acting while you're saying you're your rea- acting is you're reacting. reacting as yeah, other exactly. things are happening in in the Exa- set you know? exactly yeah 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 another good res- example from Critical Role I think is Percy because it kind of goes on the other side of the spectrum where it's like. Oh, I'm this dark, really intelligent, super character. emo. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're really emo character, but throughout the campaign, like he grows closer with who he is as a person. Realizes it's like there's more to life than just my inventions and my mistakes. Yeah, and like his guilt. And yeah, stuff. his guilt. Yeah, he, yeah, yeah. he really has to move past his guilt and open up to the rest of the party and right. evolve as a character. Yeah. So even if you pick a stereotype. Like, oh, I'm just going to go with this because this is, you know, kind of what I know and right, like, like, easy to start with. Basically, the most famous stereotype, like, I, I swear to God, <laughs> introducing someone to, to D&D and you kind of show them the races in the classes, mm. they will say Elf Ranger <laughs> because everyone wants to be Legolas. <laughs> yeah. I think every, I mean, I want to be Legolas. I, I wish I was, I, yeah. I think everyone wants to be Legolas. Like, seriously, everyone says Elf Ranger. But once again, that's not bad. Yeah. Be like if you want to be Legolas or a character like Legolas, like that's totally fine. That's like a like a fantasy stereotype, and that's cool. And once again, it's like starting with stereotypes is a great place to start. It can help you get into character and understand all that stuff. Yeah. But I think you'll be amazed, like how the character will grow, like organically, just as as the game goes on. And yeah. it, it takes some from the DM to set those things up and kind of challenge that. Yeah. And, and also kind of the like other players push something on the character. exactly. Yeah, but like, I mean. Once again, like, you probably won't even realize it's happening. If, if you can, if you can, tr- like, you know, really get invested in the game, um, you know, you'll start realizing, like, th- you know, you start acting like it's a real person and stuff. Yeah. Then, because you understand people, right, because you, you're a person, then this is how they grow and this is how they change. Yeah, so it's, it's not just, like, a character in your mind at some point. It becomes a person in your mind. You know, you try and get into their mindset and, like, okay, how does he think? How does he react to this to this to this right. thing that's happening? How does he think just in general? you know that's part of getting getting into character is you get to think through their thought process right and, uh, also and, yeah sorry sorry continue no, sorry. oh I would also like to touch on just a little bit here like backstories mm-hmm. um because backstories i mean I think like they're super fun to write and like it's really cool and you know a backstory has a couple different purposes which I do want to get into but other than, you know, just being, like, having, like, knowing your parents' names, like, you know what I mean? Like, how yeah. you grew up. Um, if you ever have in, like, uh, uh, you don't know what to, how your character would react to something or whatever, just think about their backstory. Exactly. What in their life, relating to something like the scenario, would make them make a certain choice? Yeah, we learn from our past mistakes. Yeah, exactly. As people. So, right. think about in your backstory, like, would I have come across something like this, or did I have something like this happen to me? That would affect how I react now. Right, and that and that, would, that also like builds your morals and yeah, your ideals exactly. and your flaws, of course. Mm-hmm. Um, so if we just can quickly go over like ideals, bonds, personality traits, and flaws. Um, personality traits are just um, just based. I I in the, in the book I think they say something different, but I typically just ask the players to create a list of like seven or so adjectives mm-hmm. just to describe their character. So like charming, brooding. Uh, brash. Yeah. Whatever. Like, what would you say Raskar's a couple of his personality traits are? Now or how he started? When he started. When he started. He was confident, conniving, hmm. 
he was a bit selfish mm. at the start, definitely. Yeah. And self-centered. He was untrusting. He didn't want to trust anyone at the start. Mm. And that changed over time, obviously. But that came from from his backstory, definitely. For sure, yeah. yeah. That was like a big thing as well as trusting people. Yeah. And so, you know, personality traits, that's kind of that thing. But, and you also just touched on there, flaws, um, which are like the most important thing. I always say this is yeah. the most important thing about creating a character. And you create as much as you can the, the character's flaws. Yeah. And yeah, so for him, it was like he was selfish and he was self-centered and he had to trust issues. And yeah, he didn't. He only cared about himself. He only trusted himself. And obviously, these are, you know, character flaws mm-hmm. um, that he has to face and he has to deal with. And, but that leads to how he can react to certain things and take certain actions, right? Because of the past and because of mm-hmm. the way he is, right? I mean, we all have flaws, Obviously. right? Like, each person has flaws, even if you don't, like, have a list written down in your yeah, yeah. little notebook. Oh, my goodness. I, Here's an exercise. I, I Go make flaw. a list of your own flaws. <laughs> um, yeah, because I think the f- you know once again as you were saying connecting with the character is really important to having a really fun experience. Yeah, and by creating someone with flaws, that can be that's one of the best ways because we it makes them more of a living character, right? Than just you know something because we relate to someone way. with flaws. I mean, because because we have flaws. We're, we, yeah, we're human. We have flaws. Well, we, yeah, we're flawed. So. So, yeah, flaws are super important. And then uh, bonds. How would you describe bonds? Bonds? James I'm, Bonds. I'm, <laughs> before the campaign, I'd say it's more difficult to figure out bonds. From your backstory, you're trying to make things that so that you understand what your character would do in the future, like while you're playing. Bonds, it's a little bit harder because you have to commit to something like, oh, I have a bond with... Uh, travelers, because I spent a lot of time traveling when I was younger, and I moved from place to place when I was growing up. And I think it's a little bit harder to get that nailed down as a character starting out, because you're not in the mindset of your character yet. Yeah. When you're creating your character, you're trying to get into that. Right. Yeah, okay, yeah. Sometimes I describe bonds kind of just as, like, things your character is attached to. So, like, their parents or their an mm-hmm. item or something of value. Or something like that. Um, and just real quick, because we do have to wrap this up uh, soon. Uh, just ideals. Like... What your character believes in. Right. That, like, they hold on to in their heart. Like, someone who has a really good family relationship back at home might really hold on to, like, the ideals of, like, I'm going to put my family first. You know, I'm going to stick to those that I trust and, and that I love and put them above everything else. That might be their ideals. Yeah. In, yeah. in the uh, player's handbook, it gives examples of ideals based and bonds and all these kind of things based on your, uh, your uh, what is it, background. And they'll use words like um, loyalty yeah. or chaos or like words like that mm-hmm. to just kind of help you give you a, a, a direction, kind of your morals and stuff. And morals also goes into alignment, which I w- we'll talk about. Yeah. Yeah, we do have to kind of wrap <laughs> this up here. Um, but, yeah, hopefully that was kind of uh, helpful to you. I just kind of wanted to go over... Um, uh, just PCs and, you know, kind of the purpose of them and what they do and the relation uh, to the Dungeon Master. And hopefully next time I can remember that you can't hear me nodding. <laughs> or like... <laughs> yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um, all right. All right, guys, sorry we had to cut this one a little short, um, but I hope hopefully you got some stuff out of there. Uh, and hopefully you like Gabe. Um, I really want to get him on. Uh, in later episodes as well. Um, But there it is. That's today's episode. Uh, So thank you guys so much for listening.